you would think that, okay, you, 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 we're in Yamhill County, we have a lot of wine, and I represent Polk County, there's a lot of wine there, right? And you got, I've got some areas in, in Marion County, and you have wine there, and you think that there's a wine group, and the wineries are all on one sheet of music, so to speak. Not on your life. There are multiple wine organizations with multiple approaches to solving the problem. Yeah. And so instead of you know making it, okay, well, let's get all the wineries together and figure out a solution. No, you end up with four or five groups trying to, you know, and many competing against each other. And there's another example where you'll have these, these groups that are out there. And as you said, they come to some legislator and they want a bill. And, mm -hmm. and so you, sometimes you wonder, why, who would pass that bill? Well, some group came, because most legislators don't dream them up. Some group came to them and said, well, we need this. And it seemed in that vacuum to be a logical sequence of events to pass the bill or do something or maybe amend the bill to do something. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, if you're in a five-month session, I suppose that's okay. But when you're in a 30-day session, like we just came out of in February, you can only imagine. I mean, there's very little public input. Uh, <clears throat> you're aware of the citizen lobbyists in uh, the Capitol right now? Yes. Okay. There, yeah. There's all kinds of citizen lobbyists in the Capitol. Oh, is there? Yeah. Uh, is it the same group under, under the umbrella of the same group? I, I'm not sure if it is or, or not, but okay. I tell you, we, the, some of the most successful lobbyists are, in fact, citizens because if you go to a committee, uh -huh. you'll listen to, you know, it, face reality. If you see the same lobbyists, you know, three years in a row, right, and they're always coming <laughs> to you talking about this bill and they're representing something else, you have no idea. Um, I get in the hap of because you find from lobbyists and what you say special interest groups, a lot of times that's where you get your information from. Uh -huh. but the very first thing you do when you have a lobbyist walk in is, okay, who do you represent yeah. and who's the opposing side? Yeah. So, yeah. And what's the opposing side's view before you tell me what your view is so you kind of get, get what's going on. But you go to a committee hearing or you, or you have an actual citizen come there, uh -huh. uh, it's kind of a treat. When I was in the House District in my first term, I think I had six actual constituents visit me in the Capitol in the entire session we were there. Six. That's it. Huh. Well, <clears throat> yeah, the citizen lobbyists uh, versus the special interest lobbyists that come in there, and they always have um, a stake at the table, and they always want to win something. And the citizen lobbyists, you know, when I went to interview them, they're, they're citizens, and, and I'm sure you know this just but for the viewers, they're citizens that they don't want to raise taxes so they're there making sure that their voice is heard no don't do it don't support the special interests no don't raise taxes and um, has that changed the dynamics at the capitol though i don't think it's changed the dynamics yet uh -huh. <clears throat> because as i said in the la in the 30-day session in february what transpired is everybody came to the realization we're not gonna we're not we, we shouldn't raise taxes mm -hmm. But we're in a situation now where you know government's got to get smaller. Mm -hmm. you, you could quadruple taxes. You could go from the the, the low end where we're at, you know, at eight nine percent, with the, you know the temporary surcharge, which puts us about twelve percent. You could mm -hmm. double that to twenty four percent in Oregon and still not pay for state government. Mm -hmm. And so what has to transpire is we have to cut. Mm -hmm. And in the last session, as I said, in the thirty day session, it kind of got to the point where all right, everybody agreed they're not going to raise anything. And as we just pointed, I talked earlier about the health care bill. When you start getting around where we might have to cut six hundred to a billion dollars, six hundred million to a billion dollars out of the state government in a one-year period, um, yeah, it's going to get tough. And so you're going to see a lot of citizen lobbyists come in and say, "Yeah, cut," and you're going to see a lot of other people saying, "Come in and raise taxes." Mm -hmm. But in these, it, interesting enough, in these areas where we have to cut money, there's no option to raise taxes, and there's no option for fees. Hallelujah. So <laughs> it's going to have to be a cut. Yeah. And so hopefully they'll cut health care. Well, it's kind of like grass, uh -huh. I suppose. You know, the very first thing that transpires when your grass gets a little long, first thing in the spring, it's tough to mow it the first time. Uh -huh. I think it's going to be the same way in the legislature. Once uh -huh. they finally cut the first few programs that says, okay, look, we've got to get realistic. We need to provide the basic services out to the counties and cities that need to be provided. And some of these, for a better word, luxury services that we have out there, we're not going to be able to afford. We're not going to yeah. be able to do. Yeah. Um, and that's going to cut across all walks of life when we really start cutting. Can you, you want to summarize or um, any last moment uh, thoughts of things you want to talk about? No, but I, I think your point that you raised about citizen lobbyist is great. And the reason being is I point out, if you want to make a difference, contact your state representative, contact your senator, because you'd be surprised how much we don't hear. We, we hear a lot of times when there's a complaint, but what we yeah. don't hear is, is we don't hear, hey, here, here's what we need to cut, here's what we need to fix, or here's something else we can do in the law. I mean, people come to you and say, well, I'm now mad at LCDC for land use planning. It's like, well, where were you 25 years ago? I mean, we, the, the laws are so complex, amending them now is a little tough. But 
get involved. If they don't get involved, they don't contact their legislator, and they don't show up um, for hearings, because as a citizen, they'll get to be heard. Um, it's a little tough, because I said my first time around, I, we were there for six months and saw six constituents. That's all who came to visit me. The rest were all lobbyists. Mm -hmm. And so you're in this trustee government, and in order for government to work, everybody's got to start working together. Yeah, yeah, because all the lobbyists, they come to raise taxes. Raise taxes or get programs, one yeah. of the two. Um, it, which, it, which will raise taxes. Which, that's right, because every program, you either got to cut someplace or do another program. Mm -hmm. And so it is surprising, though, but there are a growing number of business lobbies out there, of course, that are trying to you know cut taxes and cut things back for, in the small business arena. But surprisingly enough, when they cut, they're the same ones they're looking for another program for something else. Yeah. What, um, what do you expect um, coming up in the 2013 session? I don't think we'll make it to 2013 without a special session. We're going to have to balance the budget before February of next year. Okay. And so based on what happens in the Supreme Court first in Obamacare and based on the economy, which mm -hmm. is not looking good at this point, not, you know, it's kind of dragging along. We're creating minimum wage jobs and there's a little falsehood out there because we have mm -hmm. summer agriculture jobs right now. Um, the state still has some significant balancing to do in its budget before it gets to February of next year. Okay. Well, thank you, Senator Boquist. Well, I appreciate being here. Yeah, appreciate you coming and look forward to talking to you after uh, the next session. So well, hopefully you know, it'll be a date. It, yeah, hopefully it'll be a date and hopefully it won't be as traumatic as we think it will be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's hope so. If you don't belong to a special interest, you might want to have your voice be heard by becoming a citizen lobbyist, which um, I don't know, I'd go online and um, uh, Google it. it it's, a, it's a team of people that work together that they say, no, we don't want our taxes raised. But, um, you know, call um, Senator Boquist if you're in his area um, or your um, representative and let them know um, we don't want special interests and let them know you support what they're doing in cutting taxes and cutting special interests. And with that, have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.